Hello my friends, how are you doing? It's time for another Essentials video. Today I'm going to show you four different ways how to crop images in Affinity Photo. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Thank you very much and get let's get started. So we have covered some of these methods before, but in this video, I want to put them all together and also explain why I use different methods for different occasions. So the first one, of course, is the crop tool that gives you a variety of ways to use it. First of all, up here, you have different modes. So you have unconstrained, which means you can move it around any way you want, any size you want, no problem with that. Then you have the original ratio, which comes with your image that you are working on right now. The ratio is the uh, basically the ratio from the height to the width of the image. So it stays well the same height and width ratio to each other. But of course, because you're cutting it because you're cropping it, it doesn't stay the same resolution. You can see up here actually the resolution that you will get out of it after cropping it. So of course the smaller the crop is, the smaller the resolution is afterwards. Then you can set up a custom ratio and in that custom ratio um, you can set here for example a value of 16 to 9 which we have often on screens today like that whoops like so and now this is 16 to 9 so this is a normal tv screen basically if you want to make a wallpaper again it shows you the resolution up here and then you have the mode resample resampling means that it recalculates the size of the image so the pixel resolution stays the same you're just cutting a certain part of the image out of it and this will be calculated in the new size but make no mistake this is no kind of wonder tool um if the if you're cutting it smaller than a hundred percent of the original resolution it will become pixelated i don't like this method because you don't really have a good grip on will it be smaller than it is originally will it get pixelated afterwards this is why i don't really suggest using this method for it i mostly use the crop tool if i want to crop it for aesthetical reasons so that means I want to have either a certain ratio or I want to pick a part of the image to put it into a design. You can see here, you can see the rest of the picture, but the part that is getting cropped is highlighted. So this gives you an aesthetical way to see which part you take with part of the images you're losing uh, while you're doing the cropping. Uh, by the way, one thing I want to point out too is when you go to resample, you can set units here. Everything from pixels, points, pikas, inches, feet, yards, millimeters, centimeters, meters um, for the size. And you can also set a resolution here. So that's also important to note. Now about the part of resampling, if you want to have a specific output size, I have a different method. I showed it in the last video, but I want to show it again. So what I'm going to do when I need a specific size is I'm creating a canvas that already has that size. You have some presets here also for print. So you can say, I want to make a flyer, for example, which would probably be in the size of A6. Okay, so this already has everything set up for me. When you go to document and you go to resize document, it tells you the millimeters. You can also go to pixels. You see here the resolution and pixel. It has 300 dpi. So I know everything is set up for me. I don't have to worry about that. And now I can go to place and I can simply put the picture here. And when I place it, the picture will have 100% resolution. So that's good for me to start out. And now I can simply zoom out and I can resize the picture. And I know it will have enough resolution because I'm not cutting lower than 100%. I'm not cutting smaller and then making the image bigger than it should be. I'm going the other way where the bigger the image is already bigger at the start and then I'm making it smaller. And I'm now still, of course, have the ability to move the picture around. And this also 
is a very good method if you have a lot of pictures that you need in the same ratio, in the same size. For example, for your website, you want to make a gallery or something with your pictures. Every picture has the same ratio, the same resolution, and you can just make one of these canvases, one of these files, basically. And then you just place all of the pictures in there that you need. So we have two more here. I can simply place them in here and then I can resize them. And I know they will always have the same size and I can simply export that. So this is how I use that, especially for that case, if I have multiple pictures that I want to have in the same resolution, in the same ratio for a website or something like that. This is a very nice method to do it very quick also to use that. Okay. Let's look at another method that is a more specific to Affinity Photo because if you use Affinity Publisher, this works differently. Uh, let's make an A4 size here, for example, a normal page. I will set the background to white so it's not transparent anymore. And now let's say you want to have your pictures in here and you want to have them as a design on your page. So there we have our pictures. Now, how do I get them to be a certain size? If you cut them, you can, of course, cut them and then import them while they are already cropped, but then you can't change them anymore. So this is not the method I'm usually doing when I design something because often you change something and then you have to start new. The customer is not happy with the ratio or he, we have another idea about something. So you have to do it. You have to crop it again. It's too much work. So what you can do instead is go to each of the files and press Control G like um, God basically uh, to put them in a group. So there's just that picture in the group now. And the next thing you're going to do is you're creating a shape, any kind of shape will do. So uh, this is also a benefit because normal cropping is just a rectangle. But what are you doing if you want to have a uh, like a circle or an oval or a heart shape or a text even uh, could work? Any kind of shape works for that because it's basically a mask, but it's still cropping technically. So uh, let's, for example, take a, a circle here just to show you that this works. So I pull out the circle. You get a perfect circle by holding shift and then dragging your mouse while using the circle or ellipse tool, as it's called. OK, so the next thing you're going to do. So let's say you need this circle um, the same size three times but fill it with different pictures so i will make three copies you can go right click duplicate to copy this and then click the one over the first group and right click and say mask to below mask to below there we go okay cool so the next one you drag down so it's a top of the next group and again mask to below and then the next one you click down here you drag it down right click and mask to below so now this is also in the group as a mask so why am i doing it like that why in a group why not mask it down directly to the picture here is why i can still click the picture and i can still resize it and the mask will stay the same this is very very helpful for me because now I can freely design whatever I want and I can still click the group and move that around. And by the way, you can not only change the position and the size of the picture, you can also go to the mask because it's just an ellipse shape and can resize that. As you can see here, I have no problem with that. Or you want to have a heart shape or something else, you can still do that. You can just remove this um, ellipse. So let's delete this, for example, and we will write uh, let's write uh, a letter here. For example, let's write B. And again, right click, mask to below. And you can see now we have cropped it in the shape of a B. So this is very versatile, very easy to use. Let's go to the fourth method. And this is the export persona. And in the export persona, you have the slice tool. And with the slice tool, the cool thing that you can do is you can just click and drag and this will basically slice or crop a part of your image and this will show you exactly the resolution you will get from that slice and also the format in this case a jpeg with rgb 8-bit 
color format. So that's very handy. And the cool thing also is with the slicing that this snaps, you can see you get these kind of guidelines here. So they help you along. If you want to do a second slice that is exactly starting where the other slice is ending, you can do it like that, no problem. And you can, of course, also move the slices around if you need to do a lot of interesting things in here. Of course, you can say, I don't want to have a JPEG. I want to have something else. Not a problem. When you look over here where your layers are, there's also a tab with slices. And in the slices, you can send individually for every slice the a format that you want to have and the quality you want to have. So you can have a JPEG or a PNG or a GIF or a TIFF or whatever you want. You can set that up here and you can also do multiple versions down here with the plus and also here with the plus you can say I want to have a JPEG but then I also want to have it as a GIF and then I also want to have it as a PNG. There is a way to actually batch export that. How do you export? That's also something I want to cover. You just go down here. It says export slices. You click on that and then it asks you to create a folder. Let's make a test folder here. And uh, we select that folder export. And now it exports all the items as you can see. Okay, so that was four ways to crop images in Affinity Photo. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.